tap more in the bottom right corner, then events and shepherd of the grove. While you're in the event, there will also be a link to our online giving platform, Give Plus, where you can schedule a recurring gift or make a one-time offering. Give Plus can also be found directly in the SOTG Hub under the virtual offering plate.
begin worship this morning. We take some time to remember what's going on in our lives, but we also take moments to take and set aside time for Christ and for God in this place and at this time. So I invite you to stand if you're able, if you wish to. If you don't wish to, that's okay. But we enjoy you to sing along with us as we open our worship this morning. Yes. 
risked our lives for your joy and prize. To see the captives' hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor, and beast. Good morning. It's good to see you here this morning. You can sit down. A couple of quick announcements, uh, just uh, reminders of what's going on. Uh, we have uh, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League is collecting uh, the coins and the boxes, uh, the mites, the mission mites, and uh, going to many uh, wonderful organizations that are recognized service organizations within our church body. Uh, number 11 is the Redeeming Life, the maternity home, uh, and they're b building an expansion. This is to help young women out who otherwise may not have somewhere to turn. And so what a wonderful blessing that those mites collected from throughout our church body are, are being to people in need. Of course, Lutheran Women's Missionary League is going to be having their fall conference rally. So that's bigger than the zones. That's more a number of zones gathering together. And it's going to be right here at Shepherd of the Grove on Saturday, October 9th. I believe that uh, people are, are in, welcome to come. There will be great speakers and uh, opportunities for spiritual growth. And uh, so you're certainly welcome to come uh, as the, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League gathers together from around, uh, I'll just say, the region, the conference. So a great opportunity. And also on Sunday, October 10th, we're going to have a guest pastor, uh, Hisham Shihab, uh, a pastor in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod from down in Chicago. He was born in Beirut as a Muslim and grew up for many years as a Muslim and uh, has done Muslim studies and stuff, and, and is now a pastor in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. He'll be with us, and his story of what God has done in his life is extremely powerful. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, so I hope that you'll be able to uh, uh, be here and appreciate and, and learn from him uh, the love of God and the wonderful, the wonderful redeeming blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, uh, we have our, our book that we're reading through, uh, don't forget, uh, Joining Jesus on His Mission. We're going to be going through chapters 11 through 16 in the upcoming week. Uh, I encourage you to uh, keep up with the readings. Uh, it's easy to fall as, uh, aside, but uh, we'll continue looking at that. And uh, may God's richest blessing be on us as we continue to grow in God's grace and, and learn some simple things that we can do in, in turning our daily life, uh, tweaking things so that we can be everyday missionaries 
And, and then don't forget, uh, also we have a, a sign-up sheet in the back of the church in the narthex uh, in regards to cleaning. We, we are appreciative of Jeff and Jody for all their years of service. Uh, we're going to need some help, though, cleaning the church in the near future. So if you'd be willing to help out and maybe do some cleaning in the church, you can sign up uh, in, the, in the back in the narthex. Uh, may the Lord richly bless us as we gather together in his house today. Uh, I invite you to rise as we call upon God to be present in our midst. We remember the, the baptism uh, name that we are, we are called to. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all my sins. I have lived as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My words and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been stained with sin. I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. God forgives you in the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. And as a servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to God's Word, read for our daily lives. Good morning. The first reading today is from Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 through 20, page 760 on In Your Pew Bible. Jeremiah 11. 18 through verse 20. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm for today that we'll read responsively is Psalm 54. O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. He will return the evil to my enemies in your faithfulness, put an end to them. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading today is from James chapter 3, verses 13 through chapter 4, verse, 12, verse 10, page 1201 in the Pew Bible. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, 
full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You don't have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is no purpose? It is to no purpose that the scripture says, he earns jealousy, jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, Good opposes, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. It can be found on our, in our pew Bibles on page 970. That's 970, Matthew 11, beginning with verse 16. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. This is the gospel of our Lord. We join together in singing our creed. Jesus Christ is Lord. 
mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is on a mission and he invites us to join him. And, and as we take a look at our gospel lesson today, it's kind of an interesting thing. We, we see that Jesus is uh, speaking to people and, well, he says, what, to what shall I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marking place, calling to their playmates, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, you didn't mourn. In other words, you didn't respond to the music we're playing. John came neither eating nor drinking. Okay? He was neither eating nor drinking. He was fasting out in the wilderness, all sorts of things. He came neither eating nor drinking, they say he has a demon. The Son of Man, Jesus referring to himself, comes eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by our deeds. Jesus came into a world that was desperately in need of him. His mission in this world was to bring about the salvation of mankind. He died on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven. And for those of us who know that, we have the distinct honor and privilege of joining him on his mission so that others will know of his salvation as well so that they can rejoice along with us, that they can know that their sins are forgiven too. And so Jesus he really makes this simple for us. And he kind of leads by example. He hangs out with sinners. Well, at times he's hanging out with the churchly people, sure. And at times he's hanging out with tax collect 
defectors, which were kind of the worst of the worst in many people's mind, uh, being traitors and giving the people's money to a foreign government that was occupying forces, namely Rome, tax collectors, and sinners. Now, now that's not to say that we should be careful so as not to be overly influenced by people and their sin whom we hang out with. Uh, Paul makes that very clear many, many times. Don't, don't indulge in the revelry that people are carrying out and, and you know, the, the eating of the meat in, in the temples, uh, in, the, in the participating in their festivities, which are not godly. But at the same time, Jesus points out that we shouldn't be separated from people in the sense that we don't talk with them. And it's very simple. Hang out with people. Don't be unduly influenced them by them, but, but hang out with people. All people are sinful. If you're not going to hang out with anyone who's sinful, you're going to be very alone. And so we hang out with people. All sorts of people. Some who hold common interests and values with us. And some who don't. God wants us to open our eyes and to notice something. He is working in people's lives all around us. He's really working in everyone's life, uh, setting things up, giving them the opportunity to, to rejoice in Him. And sometimes His plan takes quite a while. Certainly people have the the free will to reject him. And Scripture points out that many do. But inasmuch as it is in, within our power, God blesses us to be part of his redemptive plan. And it goes, it starts with simply hanging out with people. Hanging out with those who are downtrodden and, and hurting hanging out with those who've gotten out of jail recently, hanging out with people who just don't seem to have the typical Judeo-Christian values that we hold near and dear to our hearts. He wants us to open our eyes and notice what He's doing in people's lives. Preparing situations so that people can, can know Him and, and that we can actually see that and that we can be part of it, sometimes just by hanging out with people. And it doesn't mean that every conversation we're ever going to have with people is going to be a spiritual conversation, but just to be someone who cares enough and befriends people over time gaining trust, showing the love of Jesus and responding to what He's done for you and I in our lives by doing everything we can to be there for people in their lives when things seem to fall apart. Hanging out. <laughs> I've got a friend from high school and he and I used to sing together. Our voices match very well and we had a good sound together. And back at those time, that day and age, uh, we pretty much held the same values. We kind of grew up in the same type of world. And, and over the years, some things have changed. His values now would be anything but what Scripture would refer to as godly. Now, I'm not going to go into the details, but knowing some of this, I got together with him for coffee. I didn't push any spiritual conversations whatsoever. We just had coffee. As two guys who went to high school together, and he shared some things about his life, and I shared some things about my life, kind of caught up, you know how that goes. And I'm looking forward to having coffee with him again. 
If you knew much about him, you might look at me and say, Pastor, what are you doing with him? And I'd say, I'm befriending him. Maybe there will be the opportunity for a spiritual conversation somewhere down the road. But I would say that he would definitely be in that realm of being like the tax collectors or the sinners, the outwardly very belligerent in the face of God. I'm still going to be a friend to him. Because as far as I'm concerned, he has value. He has value in the eyes of God. This is what God shows to us in his son, Jesus Christ. He hangs out with tax collectors and sinners. And for that, he was highly criticized. But he invites us to do the same. Not to be overly influenced by them, but over time, maybe in keeping with God's will, to be a blessing to them. Because Jesus is active in this world. He is setting things up. And there may be a door that opens up in the future that you or I get to walk through and have a spiritual conversation with someone who is far from the Lord. Jesus is on a mission. And he invites us to join him. He's at work right now in the lives of people. Even as we sit here, there are people all around us in this community, roughly speaking, 75% of the people, in an average year, I have no idea what the COVID numbers are, to be honest with you, but in an average year, 75% of the people are not in church. But yet he's working. And he's going to give you and I opportunities that unless we, we are looking for them, and are willing to, to make time for people and go out of our way. And that, that means being intentional. It means taking time, making time for people. We'll pass right by them. You know, that, that's kind of what I've been trying to emphasize with all those cups that I bring to church. You know, the holiday cup, the Culver's cups, the Subway cups, all those kind of things. You, know, you run into people every day, and, and it's the people that you have an opportunity to see you get to know their name, you get to know a little bit about their life, and maybe, just maybe, a door opens up. Or maybe you're just so bold that you'll say, hey, you know where Shepherd of the Grove Lutheran Church is? You're welcome to join us for worship, always. And maybe, maybe as the Lord is doing stuff in their lives, maybe someday, I'll take you up on that. God is on the move. And there are all sorts of people with needs. And when you see a person who's having needs, think Jesus is active. Things are being laid out so that the good news of God's love can come into this person's life. Sometimes it's a person who's already a believer. It's just a reminder that God will never leave or forsake you. For some people, they're far from the Lord. Like my friend, my high school classmate. Maybe, just maybe, someday, God will open a door that I get to walk through and have that spiritual conversation with him at just the right time. Uh, just this morning, I... I got news that one of, my, one of my favorite parishioners throughout years of my ministry died at the age of 49. He was an encouraging person who was always very supportive and very loving and very kind. And he leaves behind his wife and his three kids. So I sent his wife a note. Some of the things I remembered about his life and his kindness. 
and sharing with her the hope of the gospel and letting her know that she and the girls would be in my prayers. God gives us doors to walk through. Gives us the opportunity to be a blessing sometimes. But we have to have our eyes open to see the opportunity. And, and, it, and it's good to know that he is actively working in people's lives. Who knows what people might be reached with the gospel at this point in time through his wife or children as their faith in Jesus Christ is displayed. And I think that would please my friend very much. God is on the move. He is working in people's lives, in the community around you, in your neighborhoods. And his desire is to use you on his mission to be a blessing. Friend of sinners. May the peace that passes all of our ability to understand these things may keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we receive our offerings to the Lord and our prayers that are brought before his altar for his work in this world and through this ministry. I invite you to rise for prayer if you're able. Heavenly Father, you oppose the proud and give grace to the humble. Help us by your spirit to submit ourselves to you and to resist the devil that he would flee from us. We ask your blessing upon our synod's leaders and all pastors that amongst those who are given the responsibility of leadership in your church, there might be a wonderful harvest of righteousness and that your mission would go forth amongst your people. We ask that you pacify our, our passions by your Holy Spirit that we may not be ruled by jealousy and selfishness, nor give rise to disorder or every, any vile practice. We ask that you would uphold this world in good order. We ask that you'd preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes, our parents, and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of the people of our land. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you would continue to watch over those who are in need of your care. We especially lift up to you those who are living in senior living facilities, especially St. Therese, both their residents and their staff. That as lockdowns happen, uh, the connection that they have with others would still be strong. Lord, we ask your blessings upon Sue, Jeff, Earl, Jane, Sue, Karen, Flo, Alma, Ralph, Sharon, Lacey and Mary Lou, Kathy and Missy, and that you would be with all those who are reading through the book with us, that growth might happen. We ask your blessings upon the people of your house at Triune God. We ask your blessings upon our preschool, our missionaries, Elliot and Serena and their children. 
And Lord, we lift up to you those who are celebrating the gift of life that you've given to them. Uh, Gary and Aidan, we ask that as they celebrate this year, you would give them another year of blessed peace and hope in you, that they might serve you. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon those who are celebrating anniversaries, Jake and Stevie, David and Janine, that their relationship with one another might reflect the, the love that you show to your church. We ask all these things as you have continually watched over us. We ask that you would grant that what we ask from you may not be squandered after passions, but sought rightly in faith. That we may receive from you that which we can be a blessing and, and use to serve our neighbors. Heavenly Father, these things we pray as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing of our almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? Na, 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 na. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? Now go in his peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.